Today is April 9th. Our topic today is customer service, dealing with your internal customers. And, uh, you know, we tend, when we hear customer service, we tend to think about um, our external uh, customers. But before we can service our external clients, we need to think about our internal clients. Who are the people internally that we need to look out for? I am not discussing what was what companies steps companies took uh, during this time. Hi Keshla, hi O'Neill. Um, I'm not discussing what steps they took, who laid who off. That was I'm sure they made that decision with their financial analysts, with their financial people. What I'm dealing with is for those companies who did not make that move as yet, how are you going to treat your internal clients? It's bygone if someone already laid off, but we still have the opportunity to deal differently um, for those companies who are still um, holding out. Okay, um, so basically the heat map that we've been tracking um, just a quick up note on that basic i saw that the bahamas feeding network is um doing their 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 um, community service so by all means this is another way where you do not starve um try to research the bahamas feeding net network and um hi alex and make sure that you tap into um, this network if or if you need food or you're you know of people who need it so that's one update to the heat map everything else basically remain the same the other update is um, the NIB self-employ uh, employment application um, or, or self-employment relief for self-employed persons hi Sharon um, the relief for self-employed persons it's open right now hi joey um so make sure you start applying another update is that i saw that the minister of finance for guyana uh is researching um or he's saying that he's analyzing to see what financial aid will be given so stay tuned and, and keep your eyes uh out there um, so basically, if you look at my previous videos, you would see uh, all of the things that I've listed in my heat map, the things that I'm tracking, and those are the updates that I've seen so far um, between the last time we met and now. Again, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do subscribe um, after this is over, after the pandemic is over. Yes, I'll have less time, but I will um, certainly commit to, to putting out a video probably once a week, um, maybe maybe at least once a month. Um, now today, customer service. What is customer service? In a nutshell, it's basically how you treat uh, the people who support you. And I am not dealing with customer service from a an external perspective today. What I'm dealing with is customer service internally. Now, as managers, as owners, business owners, we have to really look, like I said, at our budgets to see where we stand financially. We have to look at all those things that we know we are, um, the expenses, the income, etc. However, when we're going through a budget, let us not take away from humanity, the humanitarian aspect of it, the love aspect of it, the empathy aspect of it, make sure that you keep those in the forefront. As a financial person, um, I have to remind myself that I am dealing with human beings. And as managers, we should remind ourselves of that really basic but important fact. So as you look at your numbers, as you see the economy in an uproar as a result of the pandemic, as you look at the international news stations and you see what is going on, 
um, from their perspective, please, I beg of you managers, business owners, do not paint your business with that same brush. And um, a truck is passing in my background. Um, do not paint your business with that same brush, the same brush of an American business, a first world country business. Do not do that because strategically, these guys know that they are going to be relieved from this major stimulus packages. These, these guys, um, you know, if you look at the US, you look at Canada, you look at uh, the UK, etc. They've been preparing in terms of reserves for doomsday per se, for the day when they need to assist their employees to, um, to, to get up on their feet and, and to assist um, their, their citizens rather, not employees, but the governments, they've, they've been preparing for this day. In the third world countries, we have been surviving where we have a lot most country most third world countries either indebted to the um imf world bank um some some big countries we're indebted so we have not been preparing even though we try we've we're at a disadvantage however do not look at these countries and follow what they're doing because you your employees are like your children and i i don't mean to be derogatory or anything of the sort or calling someone a child from the perspective of you have the responsibility to take care of them if i have and this simple example if i have a slice of bread as a mother I am not going to send Kaylin and Kia out on the side of the road to go to the feeding network to take care of them. It's my responsibility as a parent to provide for my children, even in situations where it's beyond my control. So in the case where we've been hit by COVID-19, which was totally um, it just came up like that. Yes, the CDC and all the other um, health uh, organizations have been prepping us for such a time as this. It still kind of sprung up on a lot of us. However, it is still my responsibility as a parent to take care of my children. It is still my responsibility as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, as a manager to take care of my employees like I do for my children. So yes, we're looking at the bottom line. Yes, we're looking at the decrease or non-existent income. Yes, we're looking at expenses because those have, in some cases, our expenses remain the same but our income is non-existent. So the first thing as a financial person that I would think of is to cut costs because that's what we've been trained to do. However, I need to think about the humanitarian aspect of what I'm doing as a manager, as an owner. I encourage you to do the same. Think about the employees who have been committed to your business for years upon years, but who have not, who are in a position where they need to either, um, they don't have anything apart from your job. Yes, the government is saying that national insurance is available, so they tap into it. However, it's your responsibility to be creative, to be innovative with how you deal with this. So, Another way of, again, I'm not here to tell any financial analyst or business owner how to do their business. I'm just giving you an alternative way of thinking. And you can, you can choose to look at this way or follow your way. This is just advice, fees, opinion, all right? 
So I'm not here to say I'm the biggest financial person around. I am still learning. I'm still a baby at this. And I've only been in the financial really working realm for about 16 years. And um, so by all means, you know, I'm not I'm not the most experienced in this area. But what I can share with you is, yes, you look at the numbers. Your bottom line for March does not look good. But do not go to your employees, cutting your employees as your first means of defense. If you can do other things, if you can apply to the government for a relief loan, a con business continuity loan, yes, you may say debt, you're increasing in debt, but consider going to the government for a, for a, a loan, which they're offering, uh, especially in the Bahamas, or mainly in the Bahamas, you can find out for your other countries. You, there are other ways of, of dealing with it. Um, maybe there's, there are grants being offered. So look, how about taking out a grant mm. to assist with payroll? And once you would have received the grant, then you can deal with uh, reimbursements, etc., or speak with your employees uh, to say, well, listen, I'm going to take out a loan on your behalf or I'm going to loan you X, Y, Z until you're able to get your NIB funding because the lines are so long right now to get funding from national insurance that it may take a week or two for your employees to get that um, money or that check. A week or two is not going to cut it when it comes to persons with children at home um food to 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 eat um for for hospital visits because if they need to if they need to pay a co-payment or whatever the case is you may want to look at alternatives no, do not let cutting your employees be your first line of defense we're all in this together i understand what you're dealing with i understand how the bottom line looks but you have to think about those persons who have been contributing to your top line when things are good. And those persons who you expect to come back into your organizations when things get back to normal per se. So think about that. If you are, if you can let your children go on the side of the road and have to go to the feeding network for food versus you keeping them and giving them that last slice of bread that you have in the house and you going out to the feeding network to get food on their behalf and coming home and sharing that food. If you can do that for your children, think about your employees the same way that maybe you can fund them up front before they have to go and starve and etc. cetera for, for the food when their employers who we, the consumers, the regular consumers, are funding them on a, on a, when things are good. We're going into the stores, we're purchasing things, we're doing X, Y, Z, because your internal clients, your employees are standing on the front line and fending for your business. And now that things are not good, things are at a standstill, rather than trying to help them, you look at your bottom line only. I'm saying consider your bottom line, yes, but be human about it. Be realistic about it. Be just mm -hmm. empathetic about it because we're all dealing with this and we're all in this together. So that's, that's my message today. Because... I am still hopeful that come May 1st, things will start getting back to where it needs to be. It could be earlier, but my projection is May 1st. I'm looking at May 1st. Um, and when May 1st comes, how are you expecting to get back on stream on the knock of um, your prime minister or president saying it's now clear uh, you can get back, you still need to practice social distancing, but you can open your stores. 
how do you intend to do that as a business owner if you've laid off your employees and only kept executives on? How do you do that? The executive persons are the ones who can possibly survive during this time without a paycheck. So maybe uh, maybe those are the persons who you, you need to first look at possibly cutting, um, reducing wages, um, etc. But you look at, you try to care for the vulnerable uh, persons first before you get to the people who can um, self-exist. But that's just, again, that's just Fee's opinion. And it could be another financial person could totally knock it out the, the ballpark. And that's okay too. But that's just my opinion. So consider that. The, this is also an opportunity to let your internal clients know how you feel about them. And I'm not saying if you were let off, that means that the company did not love you. I am saying, thank you, Monique. Uh, I am saying that it is maybe their financial analysts looked at everything and this is the only means of getting it done. But for crying out loud, today is the 9th of April. We've been in this from March 17th. Are you really telling me that your bottom line is so in the red that you need to cut all your, your frontline staff? Are you really telling me that as a financial person? I would really love to, to look at your books and, and, and talk about this with you. Are you telling me that you cannot stop paying your electricity bill and let it, let it defer? Stop paying your insurance bills and let it defer. The prime minister said that we have until the end of the uh, the curview and 60 days after stop paying your insurance versus letting your employees go stop paying your electricity bill disconnections have been uh seized disconnections have been stopped if you before you think about cutting your staff think about all those other expenses which you can forego at this time before you think about cutting your staff, think about innovative ways of getting your business back up and running in terms of, okay, do you take your business online right now? Do you do it virtually? How do you deal with subscriptions? How do you, um, whatever the case is, don't let cutting employees, and this I may sound as a broken record now, but I'm not speaking to those persons or those businesses who have already done what they did. That's, you, that's on you. I'm speaking about those, to those uh, business owners right now who are still looking at their bottom line, still look analyzing the numbers. I'm saying to you, analyze the numbers, yes, but think about your people. Think about them the same way you're thinking about your children because just how your children look up to you your employees look up to you and if I'm, I'm telling you this that we talk about employee engagement to get persons motivated to work and to get them this is your chance this is your chance to motivate your employees to get them to work the way you've always envisioned this is a time for you to really um, help show them that demonstrate that, listen, my bottom line, I'm going to hold out. This is now, this is now March, April 9th. So that means it's not a month yet. So as, as someone who's living in the Caribbean, as a business in the Caribbean, you should not, again, I'm, I'm tempted to say that, but really, if you're looking at your numbers now, forget those who did it already. Do not, it's too soon to pull that trigger. It's too soon to let people go right now, right? Hold out some more. If end of April comes and you still cannot stay in business, if you're not, sorry, you cannot get back into business, then my advice to you is look at 
what you would have applied for right now, because right now you should be applying for your payroll grant. You should be applying for your business continuity loan. If you're over three million and living in the Bahamas, meaning um, your top line, your gross income is more than three million dollars, then you should be applying for the deferred uh, deferred tax credits. Um, or the tax credits, whatever they call it, and business license credits. So yes, pay your employees, but guess what? When you're filing VAT, you file, but you do not have to, you use that same monies to compensate for what the payroll you would have already uh, expended. But there are other ways. It's only the ninth, it's not a month yet. So the next step, once you would have applied, because you still need to pay your people, in my view, you apply. The next step you go to is you're looking at all those expenses which you can really defer as a business. Let, let payroll be the last expense that you tap on. Because why? My simple, my simple explanation for this is that you're dealing with humans. You're dealing with people. You're dealing with lives. You're, you're impacting just how their, their contact tracing you are contact. You need to be contact tracing because if you let Jimmy go, Jimmy is connected to Patricia, who is his wife. Patricia is is a is a house, stay at home mom. So Patricia is dependent on on um, Jimmy. Then Patricia and Jimmy have Claude, Sam, Sony, whoever else. Four children. Four Pickney they have. Four of them. They depend on, on Jimmy for monies. They depend on Jimmy's weekly salary. Jimmy may only be making minimum wage, but somehow as parents, we find a way to stretch that money. Uh, and, and so contact tracing, just how the CDC and just how all our, our Ministry of Health, um, their contact tracing, think about that as an employer. You contact Trace because now you have Jimmy, you have Patricia, you have whatever I call the other Pickney them name. All those children are dependent on you as well as the wife. Then Jimmy may have a mother or a father that he contributes to. Jimmy may do Sunday lunch for, their, for his mommy and daddy. Jimmy may contribute to his church because he's tithing as well. With that tithes and offerings, he's impacting so many other people. So now, if we contact Trace with Jimmy, you're up to about 20 persons at least who you just impacted by pulling that payroll trigger. So when you think about your bottom line, think about Jimmy and his 19 other people who you're impacting. So like I said, you start out with applying for your grants to get tap into the stimulus. You get into deferring those expenses, which you can defer. Um, you then get in, so you would have done all of that. It's now at least a month. You say, boy, let me look at this bottom line now. Let me see how this budget looks. And if you would look, you would have looked at my other videos, I would have showed you how to start your budget, how to get to this point. So this is, this is mm -hmm. I'm building on something. There's some rationale to my madness. Then after a month, you look at the repercussions. Then you get into, okay, you know what? I've exhausted all of my expenses, all, all of the things that I could have tapped into that I could have reduced. I've, I've exhausted that. Now I'm to the point where, guess what? Guess what, guys? The monies that you applied for hit your bank account. The stimulus packages that you applied for on behalf of your employees hit your bank account. So if that stimulus package hit your bank account, you can now still pay your employees. Remember, this is government grants that are helping you to pay your employees. And you're now, yes, they took a little long, but that is the same length of time your people would have had to wait to get payments from NIB. The same amount of time, maybe longer than you, 
because as a business, they're really looking at us. They're looking at us, the business people, to keep the economy afloat, to keep the people in this democracy afloat. Not supposed to be the be it, end it all for the financial crisis. As business owners, and I'm not gonna be very popular with business owners on this, but that's fine. I've, I've always been, um, you know, I, I can count my good friends on probably one of my hands. And that's okay, it's fine. I'm the last of 10 children and I'm way down at the bottom. And so I've always had that gap. It's okay, let me be unpopular. You have that responsibility in this dem democracy to look out for your employees. We have that. The, fa the, the more hands on deck, let's take, for example, the whole food store crisis that we've looked at and, and watched in this May for the Hi, Ke <laughs> Keisha. We, we have looked at this whole food store crisis in awe. But it's not the government's fault. Stop blaming the government. And I'm and, and I'm neither here nor there. I'm not F and M. I'm not PLP. I'm only a permanent resident. So I really could care less about um who and I'm not PPP or PNC or APNU or whatever you call them in Guyana. I am Felicia. So it's not the government's fault that they came up with the plan of of structuring number um letters. To shop it is the entrepreneur's fault is the business owner's fault for not being innovative in taking what the government said and replicating a great structure a great process so if the government says look i'm gonna i, I don't want this whole um rush to the food store i'm gonna divide it up into um into into letters so you go then as an entrepreneur think about customer service think about internal customer service as well as your external clients your internal clients being your employees and think about your external clients being the customers the first thing is brainstorm for a minute okay the government said this what can we do to help relieve the the whole rush can we have more call-in centers? So I, I set aside some of my staff. There's so many people out of jobs right now. Maybe I put an ad out. I need 20 people in my call center to take all the phone calls, uh, the, the, the um, what you call it, the grocery fo fo food store calls so they can take phone orders. Have some packing boys pack the grocery, um, deliver it to the people. Think about that. How about that? Rather than blame, sitting and blaming the government about why did they, you know, we talk about social distancing, da, 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 da. It's the, at the end of the day, entrepreneurs, business owners, we need to take responsibility and we need to be innovative. Next thing is we saw in Turks and Caicos and um, I think Grand Bahama, where they came up with the number system uh, so person sat in their cars and, and, and were able to go into the store once their numbers were called. Fine. Great customer service, not the government's responsibility. Okay. Now there's, it's not a, it's not a, I'm not going off tangent. That's just an example of being innovative when it comes to your, inter, your entire business. Now you get to the point, like I said, either you got the grant already you would have told your employees, listen, I need you to go and apply to NIB because listen, we are in the really red and I don't have reserves in my bank account, but this is, I have a little, I'm gonna start paying you, but I need you to apply and this is a loan. This is a loan that I'm gonna loan out to you. When you get paid, I want you to repay me back or repay me, reverse back. <laughs> I want you to repay me. And so you, you develop these things with your clients, but you do not want to get into the contact tracing of Jimmy and his 20 people that you affected by just, just blatantly cutting the switch. Good. Now, a month, April ends or April 17th gets here. 
and we're now seeing the true effect on our bottom line. They're again, they're still essential businesses and I'm sure the business community is well connected, we know. Um, so how about calling your buddies who are in the food store business, who are part of the essential services that have been exempt to temporarily take over your employees or some of your employees during that time. If you are in a business where, excuse me, if you're in a business where you haven't been tremendously affected and you're able to look at, for example, the business of um, telecommunication, for example, as an example, I'm not calling anybody out. You're in telecommunication. Technically, you haven't been really affected, right? versus someone who owns a or something else, whatever else, you haven't really been affected because you're still able to collect dues, et cetera. And, and yeah, you, you, you even have maybe a mobile service. Don't rush to cut your people. That's my simple message. My simple message for all that running on and, and going on, on a, off on a tangent, some may say, is to give you alternatives to your bottom line to stay in a float and last but not least when you get to that point if we're in may and you're still uh hooked on okay the the, the country is still shut down then you may want to consider the 40 percent of payment of salaries and let or it's 30 30 something percent let's just say 40 percent 40 percent and let the NIB cover the 60%. That 40% can get um, Joey to, to still provide for Patricia and Scotty, little Scotty and, and whatever else the other children names are and still provi provide a Sunday dinner.